All right, we are going to some review some incredible footage from Third Phase of Moon taken from random viewers from around the world. We are being invaded, folks. It's not just because everyone has a camera in their pocket, which obviously is why there's a lot more footage out there, but that doesn't account for the massive influx of sightings. Now, this first one, if everyone has paid attention to the UFO charts which have been you can just google it they're all over the place which show the different shapes and compared to when they've been seen around uh, the planet this actually is like an elongated top uh, that would be the type of shape now what's different about this is the appendages on the sides is this possible landing gear or uh, since you normally don't ever see this on uh, what would be labeled an ET craft or a UAP or UFO, this may very well be an ARV. That is an alien reproduction vehicle, uh, something that we humans have created that basically imitates the properties of uh, what they used to say in the 40s and 50s of flying saucers, uh, since we, chances are, have figured out a way to reverse this technology and create it with our own things. Things like Bob Lazar was working on back in the late 80s. And um, maybe there's been breakthroughs since then. Now, could this be something else? Meaning, is this possible a certain type of species or another interdimensional beings or maybe even time travelers? Just one of their different models, like the way we have uh, cars, you know, from Ford to Chevy, etc. Yes, absolutely. But this one is definitely unique again because of whatever you want to call them. Landing gear, appendages. I don't think they're weapons. I don't think those are guns on the side meant to shoot at people. Um, I also do not think that this is at all a biological entity. This looks like a structured craft, uh, metallic, at least metallic looking, because we're not even sure if these things are made of metal. Even Bob Lazar said not too long ago that there is a thin line between metal and porcelain. And uh, so this may very well be a combination of the two or completely something we have not yet to uncover. On a 1 to 10 scale, I would give this a solid 7, 7.5 maybe. Because I this is definitely not uh, a small drone being used on the side. Um, by some kid or an adult, because if you look at the dimensions, look at the power lines, look at the things in the back, this is not something small. This is not two to five foot in, the, in diameter. This looks uh, relatively large when compared to everything else. It doesn't look superimposed. Um, and here you go where it's actually switched, meaning uh, the light is switched so you could see more of the craft itself. Um, inverted i'm trying to think of the best way photographers would say to uh would would use to to say that but uh i would guess let me pause it for a second i would venture to guess that was probably 30 to 50 feet in diameter and uh clearly there was people out there who saw this with their own eyes not just the videographer so i believe with 99 percent probability that that was real now this one is gnarly now, people have heard of the jellyfish UFO or the uh, spaghetti monster UFO that was filmed in theater, I believe, in Afghanistan. But uh, is this possibly not a craft, but possibly a living being that is floating? I mean, people have seen humanoids in the sky. This would not be the first time. This would not be the 10th or even the 100th time this has been captured on film in the last several years. At first, it looked like uh, balloons that were just floating in the wind. But when you look closely and uh, watch what would be the so-called legs start reacting in a weird way, like they seem to be splitting apart. Um, I'm not saying they're one piece and they split into two. Right here, check this out, what is happening right there i mean this almost looks like a medusa sort of head or a head with some weird something whatever you want to call it around the neck right there that looks like it's a flying humanoid with very long arms 
and long legs that seem to be bending in, in a very weird fashion. Um, again, I'd love to know what every one of you think about every single one of these videos. Uh, this one, I'd also give um, a solid seven, maybe even an eight. Uh, I wish, obviously, it didn't go behind the house. Uh, ob obviously, we'd be able to see more if it did. But this was crazy enough for the people that were seeing it on the ground to turn on their cameras and start to film it. Now, a lot of people think that a lot of these are hoaxes. And let me pause this and make the argument of why I do not think these are hoaxes. YouTube does not pay squat. For those of you out there who are not YouTube creators and think people are getting rich from putting up UFO videos, uh, let me tell you, it doesn't pay. It's not like it was in the 80s where if you captured something crazy and you sold it to National Enquirer or Current Affair and made yourself five or 10,000 or more dollars. No, uh, a couple thousand views of something would probably not even pay you five to ten dollars. That's how saturated YouTube is. So there is no incentive for people to hoax videos anymore. Plus, there's so much amazing footage out there, real footage, that there is uh, really you have to give people the benefit of the doubt. OK, now this one I like a lot. This is actually filmed by an astronomer. Uh, and obviously, they're using a high-power telescope on the moon. Now, look how large this is, and look how fast it's going. Uh, obviously, you see all the craters on the moon. You even see the shadow of this craft. Now, at first glance, to me, it looked like something that NASA would have. Uh, for instance, if you look at the Apollo mission, once it made it into lower Earth orbit and jettisoned all the uh, lower rockets, it kind of looked like something like the lunar module um, or the rest of the spacecraft that made its way to the moon. However, we don't have anything orbiting the moon right now that we know of publicly. Is this something China has? Absolutely possible. Is this uh, something that is, you know, secret that NASA is using or the military? Definitely so. Very high probability. We do know that there are space drones out there. Also, we have the Space Force. So I am not discounting that this is not human or ours. I think more than likely that's probably what this is. Uh, but let's just say for the sake of the argument that this is an extraterrestrial craft that is orbiting the moon, possibly uh, going in and out of one of the bases. Now, remember... Uh, if you heard my interview with Linda Moulton Howe from a few years back, I believe the title in there says something about Neil Armstrong. It mentions that uh, when the Apollo 11, um, mo Apollo 11 mission landed on the moon, that they did, in fact, see several craft that were observing them, what, literally coming out of the lunar module and taking the first steps on the moon. Actually... Not just the Apollo 11 astronauts, all of the Apollo astronauts have said that going to the moon, they were being observed almost the entire trip. And actually, it wasn't just the Apollo astronauts. You have Gordon Cooper from Gemini and uh, Mercury missions. And even people who flew in the space shuttle would say that many times in space, they had seen anomalous craft and sometimes they even said that they were being observed by what they thought were biological creatures or space monsters one of the quotes was space snakes now this to me looks like a structured craft but it does not look at all aerodynamic but that doesn't really matter because when you're in space it doesn't have to be aerodynamic there is no atmosphere like there is here on earth that requires say uh, wings or something for lift. Uh, all you need is to something to propel it initially. And once it starts to propel, it's going to go on for infinity until something slows it down. That is why a lot of things are placed in orbit and then just sit there until they fall out of the sky and back into Earth uh, or around the moon. So Earth, remember, by the way, the moon has one sixth of Earth's gravity. But that really has nothing to do with the orbit. Now, again, look at the size of this massive uh, 
I, I want to say craft is the best term I'm going to use. I, if I'm not mistaken, you're about to see a secondary, um, a secondary angle from this. Uh, but either way, yeah, if, if the other one that I'm about to show you is not the same one, actually, I don't think it is. I think this is the secondary angle right here, which shows you it's another astronomer. People who are paying attention to the moon clearly are catching and seeing these crazy things and are sharing them with us. Why? Because we need as many eyeballs and as many brains to pay attention to this because everybody needs to speak up. Disclosure will never happen, folks. I'm sorry. You're never going to have the president of the United States or the United Nations come out and say, hey, just so you know, those things you've been observing in the sky. Ah, uh, yeah, they're not from Earth. They're created by some other intellectual beings. And uh, we can't control the airspace, but we just thought you'd know. No, it's going to happen by you, the people, continually speaking about it. This is the one that I am very excited for. Pay attention. You see that right there? That saucer type, it looks like a very traditional, you know, like a, like a, um, almost like a Mexican hat type saucer, but dome shaped. Look how large it is, again, when compared to the craters. At first, I thought this was actually sitting on the moon. But no, it seems to be hovering. And again, this thing has to be at least a thousand foot diameter, if not even bigger. And then just look how fast it goes from zero to however many hundreds, if not thousands of miles per hour. Like literally zero to boom, gone in a flash. Uh, again, when you look at the craters, uh, we do know they're scout craft, 30 to 50 foot in diameter, sometimes 100 foot in diameter. Those go into larger Sometimes people call them motherships, and even those go into something even larger than that, which could sometimes be the size of the moon or beyond. This clearly is not a scout craft. It is probably one of the so-called motherships, not the moon-sized ones or planet-sized ones, but the one that probably stores several, if not dozens, of these scout craft. Is this manned? I would love to know, but this is massive. I do not think this is one of ours. I do not think this is an ARV. I think this one, I would have to say, in my best opinion, this is probably um, a non-terrestrial craft that is uh, maybe leaving their moon base, maybe coming here to Earth, or maybe checking out the rest of the solar system. What better place to monitor Earth than the moon, especially on the dark side of the moon, since we're always being faced with one side of the moon. So if you're on the dark side of the moon, basically they can do whatever they want. Our telescopes will never be able to see them. Maybe that's why China has such an interest in uh, landing there, mining there, and possibly setting up shop there. Uh, it's a very secretive country, so I'm not sure we'll get any of those answers anytime soon. Again, folks, love to hear what you have to say. I would rank this at an 8.5. Uh, it's truly fascinating footage. Look at it again. Hey, real quick, let me take this time to tell you folks, if you enjoy what you see and you enjoy listening to the interviews I have, since this is not live and you can't super chat, drop me a like. And if you can, skip Starbucks for a day and leave me a super thanks. I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, back to some more footage. Uh, this again, look at that. Look at that over the moon. See. You have to understand the perspective of this. That is massive. Again, the moon is not, you know, a tiny object. Uh, and a lot of people have reported of seeing, you know, multicolored UFOs, uh, you know, from going from red to green to blue to pink to purple and then back again. What is this doing? Uh, is this something that is just shining a light onto the moon? Is it looking for something? Is it possibly looking for the moon base? Is this a different type of species that is going to observe another type of species on the moon? How many different species are on the moon? If you listen to my interview with Jay Widener, uh, he will tell you the Arcturians were the ones on the moon that were there when the Apollo 11 uh, astronauts landed and basically told us to stay away. We don't belong there. That's what Jay Widener said. You could find that interview on my channel along with 500 other interviews 
um, that are still there, unfortunately. Many had to be taken down because of uh, unfortunate, uh, let's just say, policies that YouTube has changed. So when they were demonetized, for whatever reason, I took them down. Now, look at this. I initially, it looked like a triangle. But remember, that that's because we're kind of looking at it in a two dimensions. That's what video photography is. We're not seeing things in hologram. But the more I studied this before I created this video for you, I actually tend to think this is more of a pyramid shape craft, uh, three dimensional, you know, triangle in essence. But look how initially it starts. It's got its distance from away from the moon. And then, of course, it gets closer. And then you see the illumination on the moon. So what is it that we're looking at, folks? I would love to hear from you guys. Now, anybody out there, remote viewer, if you are remote view the moon, tell us all what you see. Tell us all what this thing is doing. I do not believe this is one of ours. This does not look like an ARV. It does not look like it's the Space Force. This is way too large to be something that was launched by a SpaceX rocket and then released to go do reconnaissance. This clearly looks like it's something else. And I'm not just saying us as America. I mean all of Earth. I don't think China is responsible for this. I, I, if you could just imagine how much thrust, how much fuel it would take to launch something from Earth of this size to go do what this is doing. Uh, so this one, I would also give a solid eight. Everything I've shown you so far, I don't believe any are CGI. Now, all these ones from the moon are literally taken from astronomers. And again, big shout out to Third Phase of Moon, my good friends and mentors, Blake and Brent Cousins, because everybody who films things sends them the footage. And if you've noticed, I've been a part of their videos uh, from cheese for 12 plus years. But recently, I'm one of the experts that gives analysis along with Blake, Brent, and Apollo, and whoever else is available. Okay, this right here, I'm going to pause this for a quick second to give you some background. Now, if you all remember, in 1990, I want to say 1992, between 1995, there was one of the craziest videos released in Mexico City. And what it was was a typical flying saucer of just you could even see what people call porthole windows, but they were definitely not wind uh, portholes, as explained by Bob Lazar. But that's what they look like. And it was wobbling uh, pretty badly, very slowly in between these buildings in Mexico City. A lot of people initially tried to say that was fake. But of course, as time progressed and you had a bunch of witnesses on the ground that said, no, this is what we saw. Of course, uh, it ends up being one of the greater footages ever. This looks just like that. Now, at first glance, this looked like a cigar-shaped craft. But that's not what I believe we're looking at. I believe we're looking at a side view of a flying saucer. Now, granted, there is no dome. Uh, but again, I do believe that that's what we're looking at. And also, notice how it's all dark. Uh, that very well could be the color, but I also don't think that's the case. I think what's the case is, it, and here, I'm going to tell you something more about that too, as it's as you see that little halo effect around it. Uh, I think it's possibly in one dimension as well as being in our dimension. We do know these things can alter space, time, uh, especially if they're using anti-gravity, which seems to be the case, unless there's an un uh, a, a new form of technology and propulsion that we are unaware of. But lots of people say they'll see an alien being and they could literally see right through it. And then it'll materialize and then, you know, dematerialize in front of them. Same thing with these craft. This could be 60% in this dimension, 40% in another. Now, about the halo around it, if you all remember my interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson, one of the things I kept asking him was about the Alcubierre warp bubble. Now, that essentially is what creates the ability for craft to travel faster than the speed of sound by being enveloped in a gravitational field, warping the space-time continuum, creating a wormhole, and going from one place to another part of the galaxy or beyond, another 
even another galaxy, one part of the universe or multiverse to another. That is what we're seeing. This is not an artifact in the camera. Yes, this is high definition. This may not be 4K. Clearly, you can't see you know, the clouds in the highest definition. But when compared to everything around this craft, what you're actually seeing is that halo effect. And that's why I believe this is enveloped in gravitational field or maybe some dark matter or something completely unknown. But nonetheless, I believe this is an Alcubierre warp bubble that is surrounding this craft. And that's what is allowing things to go, you know, in and out of places, in and out of caves, in and out of the earth, in and out of the atmosphere, in and out of water, uh, as they say, transmedium craft, as fast as they are. Now, also, I love this because it's going behind the clouds and reemerging. If someone was trying to make this at home to fool people, uh, they would have to go through a lot of effort. But if they did, if let's just say hypothetically someone wanted to hoax this, wouldn't you think they would have made the craft a lot more clear? Wouldn't you? I mean, I don't think very many hoaxers out there would even think about the Alcubier warp bubble and therefore decide to make, you know, the surrounding bubble or surrounding area of the craft slightly blurry. That's a lot of things to consider that I don't think any hoaxer uh, would even think about to that extent. And then what? If anybody's hoaxed these, nobody's come forward to claim their fame. Uh, that used to happen in the past when someone would make something fake. They would later uh, say, hey, I pulled uh, the fast one on you, and therefore, ha-ha, you know, look what I could do. But no, nobody has come forward of anything being shown anytime recently that said, I created this, uh, give me my 10 minutes of fame. So I would give this a solid nine. Yeah, that's a high number, but compared, com comparing everything, uh, taking everything into account from the fact that you have this warp bubble, which is what, what I'm calling it around it, or distortion, that's another uh, term you could say around this craft. And also the fact that it's going behind some clouds while being in front of others. Um, and again, just look at that. That is amazingly good footage. Uh, there you go. You could see the halo in that uh, as it's zooming in um, much more clearly. And again, I want to thank the cousins for uh, pausing it and zooming in as much as they did for us to be able to see this so clearly. Now, we got some more coming up. Um, oh, geez. Again, look, you see things on the bottom that uh, on here on Earth that you would normally not see uh, if you were to be hoaxing it because everything has to be uniform. Okay, this is one of my favorite. Actually, I think this is probably my favorite one outside of the one you just saw. Uh, this looks like a square or possibly a cylindrical type of craft or object that is dropping a ball, possibly an unmanned scout. This came, uh, this reminds me of one of my favorite photographs of all time, which came from one of the greatest UFO documentaries, which came out in 1997 called UFOs Above and Beyond. There is a still shot in that very, very clear off the coast of Florida, where you see essentially what you're seeing now only much more clear. And what is happening in that one, you see a ball coming out of a cylindrical but almost square type with ribs on the side. Again, I wish I had a photograph to put side and side to share, but you all can check it out. UFOs above and beyond to see that. Now, what's unclear in the other one, you don't know if, it's, if that ball is going in or is being released. Here, fortunately, we're able to see a video and something is being expelled. My guess is what's being expelled expelled is an unmanned craft an unmanned sphere that is about to do its business maybe search earth for uh you know any uh raw materials uh we do hear stories about the anunnaki looking for gold whatever it is this is also would not be something the space force would use or any military would use if the military was doing testing of this they would do it in places that we cannot see and we cannot film they would want to remain secret now also you see how blurry this is 
this goes back to what I was saying earlier. The fact that these things have the ability to be in one dimension while being at the same time in another dimension. And uh, you've heard that story, like I said, from multiple contactees, abductees, and just people who see UFOs and UAPs all the time. Now, at first, like I said, this looked like a square type object, but I think it's more of like, you know, more of like a sphere, like a, like, like a, a small, take a barrel, cut it in a half, a ribbed barrel where you got the ribs going down vertically. And that's essentially what we're seeing here. And then you see that, that spark, that, that flash of light. Is that possibly because this ball is, uh, you know, is maybe being ejected with some form of propulsion, but where is that sphere going? Is it going into the ground? Because we do know there are reports that people say craft and other things will come from the sky and go literally straight underground when there is no opening. It's almost like it could go straight through solid matter. Or is it just disappearing? Uh, very, very unique footage. This is not something that people film all the time. Uh, so if anybody out there has captured anything amazing, Make sure you contact us. Contact me or contact uh, Blake and Brent from Third Phase of Moon. They will do the best by uh, zooming in for it, zooming in the footage, cleaning up the background, just to make it the most presentable for you to decide. And once they have it, then I would be glad to share it here as well. Also, folks, if you want more interviews, let me know. Uh, I would. I'll, I'll start doing some more, but I need to see that the demand is up for them. And I do have some lost interviews that I would be happy to share with you folks that uh, chances are, actually, I know uh, almost all of you have not heard since their original airing on Revolution Radio, as well as the AM and FM stations that were around at the time. Right here, real quick, this is a little promo for Blake and Brent's a uh, comic. You have to check it out. I have a hard copy of issue one. Issue one lays the groundwork of the story. Issue two really starts to get into the story. Look at this artwork. This is drawn by Brent Cousins. He is a fantastic artist, and I'm not going to spoil who's in it, but look, you, you might even recognize that person with the glasses. There are people, as you read this comic book, they're going to be like, hey, that is so-and-so. So I don't want to say the names of who they are, but Battle for Disclosure is available. Like I said, I, you could check on any of the Third Phase of Moon links or just search it in Amazon and you can get it. So with that being said, folks, like I said, if you want to continue to support me, drop me a thumbs up and uh, leave your comment of what was your favorite video and your uh, what else you would like to see. And I also want to know if you folks want to hear those lost interviews. Also, if you haven't checked out that confession I covered not too long ago about the crash and retrieval of uh, the soldier who was involved in the program. There's so much more detail. I'd like to talk about that. So again, I, as long as you guys say in the comments, you guys and gals, then I will do so uh, as much as I could. And again, if you want to support me, since this is not live and you cannot super chat, please Drop a super thanks, and I would greatly appreciate it. With that being said, folks, this is Dr. J, host of Dr. J Radio Live, and I will catch you on the flip side.